Welcome back. If you were to have the new president sitting where I'm sitting today, and you have the opportunity to, to speak to him, what would you say to him about this particular problem? Hmm, that's a tough one. I would tell him honestly to say, please let us not politicize this issue. First things first, remove politics from it because everything in our country seems to be politicized. For one who has gone through a pain, having lost a son, in this, my only son and my first child in this terror matter. Ah, don't politicize it. Let's see it as it is. And all shades of opinion and of people are important to solve this problem. First things first. Secondly, I would say, look for the, for the what do you call them? <laughs> like they will say gender mainstream people who are, when they want to talk of gender issues. Mm -hmm. I don't know, terror mainstream, terror, not terror. Ter to experts. Ex people who have Intelligence, perhaps. Yes, not intelligence. only intelligence, people who, who are touched by this issue deeply and who actually are sincere enough to give it a good shot at what to do about it and how to go about it. To have that security round table, you must have those who have suffered from it whether they are illiterate or not illiterate, the illiterate ones, you must have those who are fighting them, who are being accused of either having done a, a, by your sponsorship or not. Whatever. whatever way you must have to go all, get every facet around to discuss and come to the root cause of it. Cause of it. Just like the British, they would say, oh, it's homegrown. They never really solved it. So if there is the aspect they're pointing, oh, they want to come and help Nigeria to solve its problems. I would say <laughs> we've got to look at it also from all aspects. Have, 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 have we, as the international community, really solved their problem so you're not, on terrorism? You're, you're not impressed by the offer of you know, the British and the Americans to come and help? <laughs> uh, I don't think I want to make any comment on that because I'm, I'm like... What you would say at some point is that, yes, physician, physician heal thyself, but there is also a time when, when help was needed, I believe, and it didn't seem to be coming. So why would we let it run so badly, so long, so late, and then suddenly the help is coming? No Although to be fair that. to them, they've, they seem to have at least um, reduced the possibility of attacks within their own soil, even if they've not been able to stop terror outside um, their shores. So that is some success, isn't it? Because yeah, it is a lot of, no, 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 don't get me wrong. Certainly there's a lot of success in the world of whatever because of better technology, search and uh, stop and search, airport security, all of those things. And even though once in a while these things slip through, no, it's a protect, like, like, like you know in the world, there's no permanent friend, no permanent enemy, it's always self-interest mm -hmm. until you sort of, have a synthesis of how you're going to find out where, what makes a terrorist want to be a terrorist. Why do you want to be it? Why do you want to kill someone else? I don't know whether we can ever get to that, to that, distill it to that level, because it's something I would wish to have known. Why did Hasib Hussein get up one morning with the Tanwea and the what, Sadiq and all who influenced him to say they're going to bomb. But remember, one thing about Sasibu said was that he chickened out mm. in the last minute. Maybe he had a prick of conscience and he didn't want to bomb anymore. The bus was not part of the, 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 the plan. The plan. Yeah. It was supposed to be a flaming cross that was supposed to have made in the underground. Then he chickened out. And at the end of the day, they kept phoning him and phoning him until he had to board this bus and then he had to ex uh, 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 explode the bomb. So you find that there are minds, young minds, that are not wicked, that are not evil people, but others infiltrate those minds and use them and make them cannon fodder for something that they, the older ones who are sitting back and calling these young ones to come and do this, would not even do. And that is the crux of the we've, matter. We've certainly found, I think, that to be the case with Boko Haram sending young teenage girls. Thank you. The lieutenants never blow themselves they never blow up. Themselves as always, up. Yeah. And that is, for me, the issue that one could have said, let the head of state also look into these kinds of issues. How do you get to those who perpetrate this crime by using religion, which is not so, 
because they put it on mines that are, that, are, that are still vulnerable, like you would say tabla rasa mines, and you put the evil into it and you make them believe it is religions, religious good that you're working for, 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 for God or for Allah. And so you go and do this. Many victims of terror now in Nigeria, parents who've lost children, and mothers who've lost uh, husbands, all sorts of things. Is there anything that you've gone through that you think provides some useful advice or some sort of comfort to them that you can share? It's, it's not one size fits all, first of all. But one thing I can say, because most times people come to me and say, oh, I've given them strength, they've drawn strength. Oh, they look up to me for the, the way I've been able to pull through. And I get shocked because I'm amazed. I'm like, really, what have I done? Because at times I know that deep-seatedly I'm, I'm weak. But the major thing I will say, like I said earlier, is my faith in God and the strength I have drawn from, from him saving me. And that's all I base my, 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 my strength on. One, forgiveness, true forgiveness that you know is like, I don't want vengeance. No vengeance. The more we avenge. But, but how did you get there? It doesn't sound like an easy place to get to. That's what I'm telling you is by the grace of God. I put it all down to grace. I can't, I can't, I can't give it to myself. Because if you know how... There's no formula that no you can formula. share. The formula I can share is pray and pray and pray and open yourself to God. And then have support, family support. Believe me honestly, my immediate family have been so good to me. My church, my priests, my friends in the church, my priests in the church have been so good to me in that they've prayed, they've prayed me through. They've prayed me through. I turn to the Blessed Virgin Mother and I pray and I cry and I shed my tears and I wail and I say, speak to me. Why? You were at the foot of the cross. You suffered. Your son helped people. He healed people. He was supposed to be the son of God and this is of God. He healed people and then these same people turned around and killed him. You followed him through on the Calvary, on the, on the station of the cross, and you saw him, maim, saw him nailed to the cross. And you uttered no word. You just took it all and you pondered it all. And I asked, is this what you want of me? But I'm only human, I'm not the mother of God. Why, why me? I'm only human mother, why? And I hear that still small voice saying, Hey, Mary, you can go on. You can. I am there with you. Just look at me. Use my example as yours. Attach your pain to my son's pain on the cross, and you will heal. And I said, oh, really? And I attach every Lent, Lenten season, is my pain, most painful season. I reattach Anthony, his mangled body, on that Tavistock Square, that bus, I didn't see it, I just imagine it. I imagine how he must have been blown up, some part of him, not all, because there was part of him that was buried. I imagine, I says, okay, I'm picking up all the flesh, I'm picking up all the bones, I'm picking up everything. Lord, I'm joining you to, your, to, your, to, your, to yours as you were going to Calvary, your blood, his blood, and then all his mangled flesh and body, I'm tying it, I'm buying it onto the cross on Calvary. And as you are resurrecting, Lord, he's going with you to that place of joy and peace. And as he's getting there, he's remembering that he has one mom down here that has gone through hell and pain and that wants healing. And he has loved ones here who need him and who he has to intercede for us. And that's how I've pulled through. And I did that and believe me, by the seventh Lent, it took that long. Seven years. Seven years. I cried no more in the church during Lent. And now it's 10 years, and I'm like, it's getting now better and better, even though the pain is still there, but it's getting better. And then, of course, I wrote the book, my book, For the Love of Anthony. And that helped me as well in healing. So telling the story telling the helped. Story, it helped me a lot. It helped me a lot. Praying my way through, telling the story, and trusting God.
Let us take a break. When we return, we go into details of the work that Marie Fatah Williams has been doing with the foundation she set up in the memory of her son. Don't go away. <laughs> 